It's a Q&A edition of Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1362. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. We're gonna change it up today and address some audience questions on the show. If you've been listening for the past couple of months, you may have noticed that I've invited you to all send your questions over to finance at oldpodcast.com. And on today's episode, we're going to address a few questions that have a common theme. These Optimal Finance Daily listeners struggle with their spending habits. And trust me, folks, I have been there as well. So hopefully I can provide some good food for thought on the questions today. I wanted to point out that one of the things I really love about the FIRE and personal finance communities is that there are so many people willing to provide their diverse perspectives on various money issues. Personal finance is so personal, there really isn't one right answer. So when it came to putting together responses to these questions, I consulted the Facebook group I run called For the Fi Curious. Of course, I first got permission from the questioners before doing this, but I wanted to collect some more varied feedback so that we can all ponder more than just my one opinion. So if you're looking for some financially minded friends, check out this Facebook group. It's called For the Fi Curious, and it's a joint group between Optimal Finance Daily and the Economy Conference, which is the conference I produce. In this group, we aim to inspire you on your path to financial independence and share resources for your journey. Just search for Optimal Finance Daily and you'll quickly find the Facebook group called For the Fi Curious. But for now, let's get to today's questions and start optimizing your life. So our first question comes from Robin. She says, I'm on a debt-free journey. I've paid off everything except my student loans and I'm working on it now. I'm not sure what to do next. I'm also working on a three to six month emergency fund. I had so much consumer debt and now that I don't, I'm relaxed with spending. I guess I'm struggling with making a plan or goals. I've been listening to your podcasts which are really helpful and greatly appreciated. My ultimate goal is financial independence and learning how to live that out. Well, it sounds to me, Robin, that you do have a goal. It's financial independence. But perhaps you just need to solidify what that goal really means to you and build out a plan to get there. It sounds like you had a lot of excitement around your goal of getting out of consumer debt. And now that you've done that, you're more relaxed with spending because you're not as committed to your goal of financial independence which is understandable. Pursuing financial independence is essentially everyone's goal if they ever wanna retire one day. It seems like something you should do because it's something everyone should do. But if you really wanna prioritize this goal, I think you need to have a clear vision of what your life could look like when you reach financial independence. What is your why of phi? If you're able to visualize your commitment to pursuing financial independence in the moment you're about to make those daily spending decisions, you'll start to get more excited about what you're gaining versus what you're losing by not buying X, Y, or Z right now. Getting out of consumer debt is so awesome and worth celebrating with some additional financial goals. You're building incredible momentum here, and I think the way to keep it is by redirecting those dollars you were once throwing at your credit card debt. So when it comes to student loans, I've learned that this type of debt needs to be tackled differently than credit card debt. There are various options like pay as you earn, student loan forgiveness programs, and refinancing options. I'd encourage you to check out Travis Hornsby's speech from the Economy Conference on YouTube. It's called Student Loans Never Need to Hold You Back. And it does a great job of analyzing the many options you have on student loans. I'd also check out his company, The Student Loan Planner, for additional resources in coming up with your student loan repayment plan. Next, I'd look at the gap you have between your expenses and your income. And I suspect you've already done a good job of this when you were getting out of credit card debt. So let's just say for the purposes of example that you have a gap of $1,000 per month between your income and expenses that you previously were throwing at credit card debt. 
Some of that may now go towards your optimized student loan repayment plan. Another portion of this could go to a retirement vehicle like a 401k, IRA, or HSA. If your employer offers you a 401k with a match, the first thing you should do is contribute enough to get this match. That is free money. Finally, a portion of that $1,000 can go to your emergency fund. And once that fund is at the level you're comfortable with, you can start throwing that money at your retirement vehicles. I think the key here is that once you reach one financial goal, just reallocate those dollars to the next goal and plot all of these goals out in advance so there's no wiggle room to relax on where these dollars are going. Based on what you've shared, some good goals for you could be, number one, optimize student loan repayment. Number two, build up an emergency fund. And number three, fully fund retirement vehicles. If you plug all these into the many early retirement calculators available online, you can even see how far you are from financial independence and track against that. For me personally, knowing that I'm seven years from FI keeps me motivated. And by regularly monitoring how I'm tracking towards that goal, I can celebrate the wins along the way. Thank you to Fundrise. You know how important a diversified portfolio is as a listener of the show. But did you know that if you look at the breakdown of the most successful portfolios, you'll typically see a diversified set of real estate. And now, thanks to Fundrise, it's easy for investors like you and me to diversify by building you a portfolio of institutional quality real estate investments. Each project is carefully vetted and actively managed by Fundrise's own team of real estate professionals. And Fundrise manages more than a billion dollars in assets for over 130,000 investors to date. Since 2014, the Fundrise platform has averaged 8.7 to 12.4% annual returns, with investors earning more than $79 million in dividends alone. Start building your better portfolio today. Get started at fundrise.com slash OFD to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. Fundrise.com slash OFD. So our next question is from Emmeline, who says, my question is how can one control his or her monthly spending? What tools or suggestions do you think you can give to someone who spends a lot online every month on the basis that it's essential? How can he or she control those online spending habits? Thank you, Emmeline, for this great question on controlling spending habits. The funny thing about habits is that they are ingrained and often mindless. So I think the first thing is to just bring some mindfulness into the equation. When I was getting my spending under control, the first thing I did was track every dollar I spent through a simple app on my phone. This served two purposes. Number one, the act of forcing me to write down my spending at the time I was making the transaction made me think twice before I click that buy button. And secondly, having awareness of my spending at its worst allowed me to see progress as I got better at spending less and progress creates momentum. So let's say this month you track all your spending and you had $1,000 of wasteful spending. And next month, you have $950 of wasteful spending. That is progress, my friend. Now, the month after that, maybe you push yourself to not go over $900. And if you keep tracking in that direction over time, you'll continue to rein in your spending. I'm also wondering if the convenience of online shopping is a slippery slope. What if you allowed yourself to buy these I'm doing air quotes here, essential things, but only if you got in your car and went to the store to lug them home. Perhaps adding this level of friction and inconvenience will help you analyze how truly essential these purchases are. Finally, when I was working to change my spending habits, I found this exercise of a mental checklist very helpful. Again, 
mainly to make me pause and be more mindful about what I was doing. So I would ask myself, is this really a need or much more of a want? If it was a want, could I delay this purchase to celebrate a financial milestone or use it as a treat for reaching some other goal? Many times I would add this want to a list of things to buy eventually. And that alone would be satisfying because I would continue to come back to it and question how much I really wanted it rather than buying it on impulse. If it was a need, is there a more resourceful way to get this need met? Could I borrow this thing from a friend or repurpose something I already had? Perhaps I could buy it used. Over time, this mental exercise became a habit, just like my mindless spending was a habit. And the creativity and resourcefulness I discovered through reducing my spending became so much more satisfying than a mindless click of a mouse. And finally, we have this question from India who says, I have a major spending problem. I've always wanted financial freedom and I've been blessed to reach some semblance of it. My issue is that the more I have, the more I spend. I'm not a big ticket item kind of person. I'm a buy a million little things kind of spender. And that adds up quickly. I'm watching my money slowly dwindle. And the issue is that I spend more than what I bring in. On payday, 80% of my income goes to bills, 10% to savings, and what's left over for two weeks can blow through my hands in two minutes. It's driving me crazy. Tomorrow isn't promised, so I want to live for today, but when I overspend and tomorrow comes, I'm not going to be prepared for it. It's a strange position to be in, and I'm not sure what to do. I have a budget when it comes to bills. I know exactly how much is due and when, and I'm never late. How do I budget what little bit is left so I'm not dipping into savings while I wait for my next check? I'm sure we can all relate to India in some ways. It seems like a classic case of lifestyle inflation. Your income increases and your lifestyle increases to thwart any gains on that gap between your income and expenses. India, I think you'd be a great candidate for automating, saving, and investing. Get that money out of your account before you even see it and give yourself a realistic budget for discretionary spending each month. And for your discretionary spending, I recommend you check out an app like You Need a Budget. This app is rooted in zero-based budgeting where every dollar is allocated before it even hits your bank account. Thinking through in advance how you will spend or save every dollar sets your intention each month. And knowing that your saving and investing is done and automated will help you not feel guilty on the money you are spending. Again, tracking is key here. As Peter Drucker said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Go into this exercise with open eyes. Be really clear on where you're overspending. Track it and watch it improve over time to keep you motivated to keep going. I think a mindset shift is also necessary here so that you don't feel deprived as you move from being a spender to a saver. Here's what helped me. I realized at some point that I am always spending every single dollar I make. I'm either spending it on stuff now or I'm using it to buy freedom and options. Over time, I started to get much more excited about buying some more stocks in my after-tax brokerage versus a new pair of shoes. I also had the realization that my money is capable of working so much harder than I ever can. By investing and saving, I'm going to benefit from compound interest where my money will make even more money. Watching my investments grow is now so much more exciting to me than some shiny new possession. Well, I hope you enjoyed tackling these questions here with me today on Optimal Finance Daily. A special shout out to Josh and Rob who chimed in on the Facebook group with their two cents on spending and saving. Rob recommends you need a budget as well. And Josh chimed in with a great suggestion for zero-based budgeting. If you have a question you'd like addressed on this show, go ahead and send it over to finance at oldpodcast.com. And don't forget to check out our Facebook group, For the Fi Curious. 
If you search for Optimal Finance Daily on Facebook, this group will pop right up. So with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.